Hi everyone, my name is Xiao Shi Zhong. I'm an assistant professor at Beijing Institute of Technology, China. And today I will present our paper. Is this square inaccurate in fitting power law distributions? The question is complete nonsense. Maybe the title might be tough. <coughs> ah, just take a look. And th this research was conducted by two undergraduate students with me. And in our research, the, sense, the central question is, is this squares inaccurate in fitting power law distributions? The bigger product data, they are sampled from a power law model with the exponent being 2.5. Then the question is whether these squares can get accurate estimation for the exponent. And here's the outline, it includes two parts. In the first part, I will describe the question about least squares in fitting power law distributions with a strong bias that has caused in the research community about these topics. After that, I will, uh, sorry, we will rebuss this criticism from both theoretical and empirical perspectives. Power law is a, a, has been a, a widely, widely interesting topic in, 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 in many areas. And but, but in, in the last two decades, several researchers conducted experiments to criticize this class for its inaccuracy in fitting power laws. They conclude some statements like, like following. For example, both least squares esti estimators are biased. In 1999, a simple experiment using a random DVA generator shows the linear fee based methods for est estimating the power loss exponent tend to produce erroneous results. In 2004, Estimates of exponents of power law distribution based on a linear least squares V are intrinsically inaccurate. In 2007, and commonly used methods for analyzing power law data, such as least square fitting, can produce substantial inaccurate estimates of parameters for power law distributions in 2009. Here we present two example paper that conducted experiments to criticize these squares. In this paper, the, the also sample data from a polar model with exponent being 2.5, and they estimate the data with by this square and guess the estimated result one point. C C three. So they conclude that this square is is biased. In this paper, the authors use the exponent being two point zero eight and get the estimated exponent zero point nine three. So they conclude that this square is biased. And such question has caused a strong bias in research community about this square in fitting power laws. And in recent years, researchers who are concerned with power laws may study research with statements like, like, like those one. For example, this naive form of linear regression generates significant errors under relatively common conditions and gives no warning of it is mistakes in 2014. According to Clausewitz et al. 2009, this method generates poten potentially large error in parameter. Here, this method levels to least squares regression. And even the words, some reviewers may start their, their comments on a submission with statements like, like, like this one, this approach to fitting power law distributions to data is entirely unreliable and its results cannot be trusted. 
this sentence is from from a review of last year's ACL conference. So we see that the com in in the research community, there's a strong bias about using this guy to feed the power law. In this paper, we 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 rebut the criticism in both theoretical and empirical perspectives. For the theoretical perspective, uh, the our argument is quite simple. It is a syllogism, and for the pro proposition one, we we use the Gauss Markov theorem, which states that ordinary least squares as estimation is the best linear unbiased estimator among the class of linear unbiased estimators. In other words, this square is the best linear unbiased estimators for uh, for the linear model. The proposition to it is that is a fact that the power law function can be converted to a linear function. So from the two pr propositions, we can easily get a conclusion that this square fits power law unbiasedly. And if if want to falsify the conclusion, he need to falsify proposition one or proposition two. But unfortunately, none of those criticizers falsify proposition one or proposition two, so they cannot falsify the conclusion. For the for the empirical perspectives, we propose a model called LSABG, which is a least squares based method with average strategy for beating power loss. The idea is also very simple. It, it states that if a set of data points follow a power law, then using any subset of two or more data points can find the optimal slot of the line on log log axis, and all those slots and the average are equal. So it is expressed, uh, it is expressed at, at, as the simple formula. And we sample data from, from power model with, with expo exponent uh, being 2.5, similar to those criticizers. And we uh the left uh, figure plot the data on a log log scale. We call the segment of data uh from uh from the first part as power data, and it contains about nine, 99.93% of the data, and the remaining as long tail noises, it contains about only 0.04% of the data. And we can see that not all the data sample from a power law model follow a power law di distribution. When we use uh when we use this square to feed all the data and we get the exponent being 1.61 and it is a substantial bias and it is consistent with the the experiments conducted by the criticizers. And here, uh, the bright light indicates that, indicates to use, to use this square to view all the data. And it is similar to the figure plot by, the, by those criticizers. But then we use this square to view the data with excluding the long tail noises and it gets the exponent being about 2.5 is almost unbiased and uh, for for many runs or uh, and in in very large sample size if you get uh the this graph you get unbiased estimation so we can see that when we use the whole data this guy gets some substantial bias uh, results. But uh, uh, 
Then we remove those long tail noises. We, this square get the, the almost unbiased result. That means that the long tail noises cause the bias. It also indicates that this square is power law unbiasedly. And here are some examples for display power law samples in different size from, from 10,000 10, to, to, to 100, one, sorry, 100 million. And, and in, in different size of samples, and we get similar results. And for continuous uh, power law samples, we also get similar results. So, so that is the that is the that is the case that those criticizers mistakenly treat a data problem as a model pro problem. They they treat the long tail noises uh, as as power law, but those long tail no noises are are not, are not power of data. We compare a method with a popular model pro proposed by Corset with, with, with colleagues. Uh, this is a, but this, uh, uh, this paper received tons of citations and it, it is considered as a state of the art method. And the method use RCDF to plot the power of data. Uh, RCDF means refers a com complementary cumulative density, den density function. And the figure shows the result, results, uh, fitting results by, by um, a model and the popular CSM model. From the figure, we can see that why the two models achieve unbiased almost unbiased estimation, but the CSN discard the majority of the data and which leads to a very low coverage. And when we consider only the long tail noises, it is expected to get a, a an estimated is born near near to zero because uh, most of those, those data can should uh, should be should be written with uh, with a horizontal line, but the CSM model achieve the the exponent being two point five five with a very high p value. That means. The CSN model choose the long tail noises as following power law distribution, and we can also see that why the why the long tail noises do not follow a power law is is RCDF seem to be fitted with a power law that shows that the RCDF is not a good idea to plot the power law data in practice because it usually hide the true probability of the data. We apply our model and the CS model on real world data sets and plot the, both, both the PDF and RCDF. And we can see, we can intuitively see the results. And those results are consistent with, with the ones of sample power data. And the experiments uh, uncover a fundamental flaw in, in the popular CSM model. That is, it, it tends to discard the majority of the power samples and mistakenly treat long tail noises as, as being following power distribution. Such, uh, such fund fundamental flaw invalidate the reliability of all the research that based on the, this model and all those research need to be restudied. To conclude, we demonstrate that this squares fits power law data unbiasedly and perversely. To the best of our knowledge, our paper is the first to conduct extensive 
experiment to rebut the criticism we hold that our research can clean up the bias about least squares in feeding power law distribution in the research co community. We also show that not all the data are sample from a, a power model follow a power, power law distribution. We show that the long tail noises cannot be treated as power law, even though they are sample from power law models. We also show that the RCDF is not a good idea to plot power law data in practice because it usually hides the true probability of the data. And we also saw that the pop popular closet paper had contains fundamental flaws, which invalidate all the, invalidate the reliability of all the research, research based on it. And the source code of our paper are released to a uh, uh, GitHub, and that's all of my presentations. Thank you for your attention. Awesome. Um, thank you for the talk, uh, Xiaoxi, and seems like pretty great work. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, seems to have a, a lot of practical applications, especially uh, in the web mining field where most of the data actually follows uh, long tail distributions. Um, yeah, with that, I'll sort of open the room for chat for questions and um, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, you can unmute yourself or you can ask them on the chat and uh, yeah, whatever uh, works best for you. Um, while sort of people sort of ask questions, I have uh, one question for you, uh, Shiaoshi. Oh. Um, so yeah, my question is that, uh, in most real world applications, the data actually has a lot of noise in the system yeah. and it's actually not a perfect power law uh, yeah. distribution. So how does your findings translate into this scenario? And yeah, probably if you can comment a bit on that. Um, yeah, a nice question. And, and actually we, we Actually, we uh, our, our paper uh, this paper is is mainly focused to answer that that question whether the square is inaccurate in fitting power law. We we do not consider the uh, most complicated uh, scenario where the when the when the where where data are not are not perfect following a power law. And actually, in in our next paper, we we con we consider th those scenarios and propose a uh, to pro propose a um, a method to capture the uh, uh, a segment a uh, a segment of data that follow uh, follow a power law not from not from the beginning to the end but but only a segment of of the data. Yeah, uh, uh, a very good question, and and we 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 also consider in in our new new research. Uh, that's perfect. Thank you for the answer, Shashi. Um, and yeah, just one more. In the interest of time, I'll just take one more question. Um, but Yuyan asked on chat that um, thanks for the presentation. Have you considered uh, comparing with robust regression methods such as using Hubert loss? Mm, no, yeah, we uh. And yeah, may, we we will consider uh, the other scenarios in 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 our future research. Thank you for for Yu Yu Yan Yu Yan's question. Yeah.